All right, my brothers. And this next portion is really, really important because some of you in the various nations that you're in, some of you are going through a really tough time. Um, again, for reasons of bad rulership, for reasons of the economy, uh, or execution from other religions. Some of you are in nations where, and, and we're going to do a future broadcast, we're going to talk about persecution. And the prayer life of the persecuted believer is very different from the comfortable prayer life of the Christian here in the West. And, um, but this is Paul when he was arrested. And again, he was arrested unjustly by the authorities. And he, he was treated like an enemy of the state. They didn't just lock him up, him and Silas, but they threw them like in America, we have special sections um, in, within prison. It's like a prison within a prison and you don't have contact with other people. You're just locked there in the cell in isolation. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's like a dual incarceration. And that's what Paul and Silas were experiencing in the book of Acts chapter 16. So this word who refers to the jailer and having received such a charge, in other words, from the other government officials that these guys are really a threat or you know whatever they were told, thrust them into the inner prison. So again, you can see that's the worst of the worst situationally and made their feet fast or meaning they held it down very firmly in the stock. So imagine not only are you locked in isolation, um, but your feet are being held uh, in this device uh, where it clamps down from the bottom and the top and there's two little holes in this wooden block type of a thing. You literally can't move. You have to go to the bathroom. Well, too bad. You can't move. So how did they respond to these harsh conditions? How does Thanksgiving come into play in this terrible trial uh, of their unjust incarceration? At midnight, in other words, at the darkest of times, Paul and Silas, what did they do, guys? You guys know this story well. They prayed and sang praises to God. And the prisoners heard them. Very interesting. So they weren't just being quiet, uh, you know, the church of the frozen chosen, uh, so to speak, but they were praying and crying out to God. Actually, they weren't crying out to God in complaint. They weren't, you know, crying out to God saying, oh, God, change our circumstance. No, they prayed and sang praises unto God. Can you do that, brothers? Can you put yourself in that situation? And can you sing God's praises when things are toughest? Can you do that? Verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened. Now watch this, everyone's bands were loosed or we might say their handcuffs uh, in the modern day. This is, this is pretty amazing. So they prayed and they praised under trial, thanksgiving under trial is what we're talking about. Uh, later in the chapter, uh, and for the sake of time, we didn't go into the whole thing, but that very same jailer who had received the charge to hold them fast, make sure they don't get away, in other words, that same jailer said, brothers, after he saw the magnificent moving of our God, what must I do to be saved? And him and his whole family received Christ, and they were baptized. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful, brothers? Can you and I Take, take something away from this story today. Let thanksgiving come, even in our deepest moment of trial, even when an injustice comes our way, um, even when things look darkest. Now, God may not send an earthquake. <laughs> he may not do that. But trust that when you give God praises under trial, it gets heaven's attention. It gets heaven's attention. And the household salvation of the jailer, some people, I believe some, some, some scholars believe that he became, uh, as a Philippian jailer, he might have become a leader in the church. Of course, Paul wrote the Philippians, and maybe he was the pastor or a leader. Um, but the kingdom was furthered by Paul's incarceration, and all those inmates who could have got, gotten away because of the earthquake those of you who know the story, you know this. So it really is a double miracle there. 
And where did the miracle start, brothers? Where, where might your miracle start in the trial that you're going through today? It might start when you make a decision, a quality decision, to uh, uh, in, intentionally add more praises into your prayer life. Watch what God will do. Hallelujah. God is good.